What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video we're going to learn how to speed up Pandas data frame operations using Swifter in Python. So let us get right into it. Alright, so Swifter is a Python module that allows us to use the pandas apply function in the fastest possible manner. It is based on another Python module called Dask and depending on the task, it determines if the ordinary apply function of pandas is faster or if a multi-processed, multi-threaded uh, way of solving the problem is faster and then it chooses the respective way to speed up the operation that we're trying to do. Now, let us get started by installing the libraries that we're going to need today. First of all, we're going to need pandas itself. So pip install pandas if you don't have it yet. Then we're also going to use in this video the pandas data reader. However, you don't have to use it. If you want to use a different data set, I'm just going to work with some stock data here. You can use a CSV file that you just read in with pandas. You can create your own data. Uh, whatever you want to do, I'm just going to use the pandas data reader to get some stock data. So we're going to say pan, uh, pip install pandas dash data reader. And then finally, obviously, the topic of today's video, pip install Swifter. There you go, you can see it has quite a lot of dependencies. Once we have that, we're going to work today in a JupyterLab uh, environment here. Again, as always, you can use whatever editor you want. Uh, we're going to start by importing here pandas as PD. Let me maybe just zoom in a little bit. Uh, and then we're going to say that uh, maybe we should do some more imports here. Pandas data reader is going to be imported as web. And then we're going to also import date time as DT, which is a core Python module. And we're also going to import time, which is another core Python module. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to load some stock data. We're going to say start equals DT date time dot uh, or actually not dot 20. Actually, let's do 2000 first of January. And the end is DT date time dot now. So the current date and timestamp. And then we're going to say that the data frame is web dot data reader. Uh, let's pick a company that exists for longer. So let's go with Goldman Sachs, for example. Yahoo is the finance API and then start end is the time frame that we're looking at. Uh, DT is not defined. There you go. Now it is defined. And if we look at a data frame, this is what we have. Again, you can take whatever data you want. I just want to have some some numbers here. We're not going to do anything useful here. We're not going to do any stock application here. I'm just going to take the numbers and do something that takes time, like taking the factorial off some of these numbers or even some of these numbers multiplied by another number just so that uh, the function that we're going to write wastes some time so that we can see the effect of Swifter. But let's start with the most basic example of wasting time. Let's just sleep. Let's just say time.sleep. We're going to say we have a slow function here. Uh, we have a row that we get from pandas or from the data frame. We're going to say time sleep 0.001 seconds. Uh, and we're going to say then um, return the row as a result. So that is our function. And uh, what we're now going to do is we're going to measure the time of an operation. So the operation is we take from the data frame the closing price and we want to see the first thousand closing prices. So this is the data frame. We just have uh, here a couple of uh, of closing prices and we want to apply now to them a function. So the apply function basically takes each row and applies a function to it. So when we pass here the slow function, uh, what happens is that each row will be passed here as row and then we're going to in this case, just return the row, nothing too fancy, we're going to get the exact same thing out here. But of course, we can also say row squared row something else, we're just going to return the row in this case. And we're going to measure how long it takes, we're going to say t1 equals time time, we're going to copy this, we're going to say this is t2. And then uh, this should take in my prepared code around 14.8 seconds. So this will run now you can see, uh, essentially, what it does is it executes this thing a 1000 time it sleeps uh, for for 0 0.001 seconds a 1000 times and returns the row. Now you can see it's done. We can say t2 minus t1 15.65 seconds uh, was was the time it took. And now we can see if we can speed that process up with Swifter. And since Swifter does multi processing uh, slash multi threading, obviously, this is going to be faster, especially because sleep is a function that can be easily used for um, 
So, so the downtime can easily be used. It's not even a computation. It's just waiting. And in that time, we can do something else. So let's say Swifter, import Swifter. We're going to say here again, T1 equals time, time. We're going to say T2 equals time, time as well. And then we're going to say here the same thing. We're going to copy that line. The only difference here is going to be that after the I lock, we're going to say dot Swifter. This is how we apply the Swifter function we or the Swifter module. We take the same thing. We take the data frame piece that we want to look at. We say dot Swifter. And now everything we do is going to be um, optimized by Swifter. So if I run this now, uh, this is already done. I can say T2 minus T1. You can see 0 0.649 seconds um, compared to 15.65 seconds. So obviously Swifter massively speeded up this uh, or sped up this. What is what is actually the past tense? I'm not sure. Um, but this was um, way faster than before. And you can see that Swifter actually worked. Now let's look at an example that maybe involves some computation because it's easy to optimize time dot sleep. So let's go ahead and say we want to have um, a lambda expression here as a function. So for this, we're going to import from decimal, which is also a core Python module, we're going to import decimal with a capital D. And we're going to say again, t1 equals time time. T2 equals time time in between what we're going to do is we're going to say df close apply and we're going to apply a simple lambda function, we're going to take the row x and we're going to say, I uh, want to have a decimal value of math, we need to import math as well, also part of the core Python stack, math dot factorial of the integer value of uh, this row times 50. So essentially, we take the closing price it doesn't really make sense what we're doing here. I'm just doing something that takes time. Um, but essentially, we take the value we multiply it by 50, we truncate the decimal places, we get the factorial of that large number. And um, yeah, we turn it into a decimal, and then we return it, basically, that's all we do. And this is going to take quite some time. So I'm going to run this and probably we have to speed this up because this will take around 67 seconds here. All right, so it's now done, we can see how much time it took t2 minus t1 67 seconds. Now let's go ahead and try the same thing that we did here with Swifter. So essentially just the same thing, but dot Swifter here, dot apply. This will also not be happening in a second. But uh, in the prepared code, it took only 37 seconds, uh, compared to 67 seconds, which is way better. There you go, it's now done. You can also see that we have this progress bar. Obviously, when we do something with multi processing here, uh, it's going to to have some overhead that uh, will take some time, but sometimes it pays off. In this case, t2 minus t1, we can see 34 compared to 67 seconds, definitely a speed up. So here you saw that Swifter chose this operation here, uh, or chose to use Dask in this case. So let's look at one last example, not really a fancy example, just an example that is uh, way faster, just squaring the numbers to see that we also see a speed up there, time, time, and t2 as well. Then we're going to say here df close, apply lambda x x squared. So we're just going to return the squared uh, values this took t2 minus t1 this took 0 0.002 seconds. Whereas if I take this same thing here, and I say Swifter, okay, this actually, yeah, a little bit faster. But usually the thing that happens is if Swifter notices and I have a, a nice graphic here, do I have it here? There you go. Um, this is from the GitHub page. What happens when pandas uh, when, when Swifter, sorry, recognizes that ordinary pandas apply is faster than the Dask, then it's going to just pick the pandas, right? So it always finds the fastest possible way. So you can see here, uh, we have uh, certain graphs that say, okay, the lower um, the line is or the lower the point is the faster. So the execution time is the y axis as far as I remember. So in this case, panda supply is faster, dask apply is pretty slow. And the swifter applies also slower than the panda supply. But as we go on with the size of um, the operation, for example, you can see that the panda supplies actually the, the, the slowest version here, whereas the Swifter and Dask are faster. So this is definitely something um, that is happening behind the scenes, we submit an operation, we want to do some apply operation. 
and Swifter figures out if the ordinary pandas apply function is enough or if it has to use dask apply or something else. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.